This podcast is brought to you by Summit 96.1 as part of the New Zealand Broadcasting School. I'm Michael. Oh, g'day, Michael. My name's Sam. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's nothing funny about that. Uh, this is a wee podcast, a audio snippet, if you will, of um, what well, this is what we offer. <laughs> Welcome to the new and improved breakfast show with Billy Sam. Idol on Summit Morning Show with Skid Row on Summit Mornings with Mike Bill and Jam on Summit Mornings with Michael and Sam. on Summit Mornings with Mike and Sam. Uh, I'm just going to say it off the bat. Donald Trump loves to interrupt Hillary Clinton, doesn't he? Yeah, but he does a bloody good job of it, does old Trumpy. A great job. He does what, sorry? A great, a, he does great. Look, Michael. <laughs> he does, like, you know, one of those pretty good jobs that require a whole lot of effort and just being talented at what you do. So this new revelation has come about called manterrupting. And that's basically when men don't see their females as conversational equals. That's fair enough, though. Well, so you're probably a man to yourself. I do it on the odd occasion, but it's warranted. It's only when they're not saying things that need to be said, that, you know, that they're saying things that are irrelevant. So man to there's also mansplaining. And a 1975 University of uh, California study has shown that 98% of uh, men mansplain to their females, they don't see them as conversational equals. They'll they'll talk in a condescending tone to them as well. So instead of just explaining and having conversation like we are, they'll be like, Jennifer, you preheat the oven at 180 degrees on fan bake because that's how you cook it and the chips will go soggy if you don't do that. <laughs> So like instead of just saying, oh, can you flick the oven on? They'll really get there and there. And she'll end up, she'll be like, I'm 45 and I've, I've raised the kids more than you have. You've been down at the local way too often. And you're telling me how to cook a bloody bag of potatoes? Yeah, exactly. Get out of here, Jimmy. <laughs> Summit. Well, did you catch the third debate? The uh, US presidential election, the third debate was on yesterday. Did you catch any of it? No, I stay right out of that. Completely stay out of that. I did too. <laughs> and uh, I just heard through all reports that it was exactly the same as the previous two. Probably just got a little bit more nastier. Yeah. Uh, Trump coming out with some beautiful Trumpisms. <laughs> uh, we've got some bad hombres <laughs> yeah. coming across. And then Clinton um, standing there smug, mm. corrupt. They're both as bad as each other. They're just so bad. Well, they're both bad. One's obviously more intense than the other, being Trump is pretty full on with, like, he just doesn't really care. (laughs) No, I mean, he's got conservative views and and just banging out gun laws and then he's going to build a wall. Now, that would be interesting Mm. if he got on. I'd love to see whether he could build a wall. Well, China did a good job. Yeah, China did a fantastic job. I mean, they did a great job, actually. And that was years ago. I mean, years ago. It's so who back. knows what kind of... I just find it funny how... Do. Yeah, I find it funny how um, he says something and, like, so many contradictions. There's videos online of him saying, like, blah, 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 I hate Mexicans, I don't like them, build a wall. And then the next day, it blows up in the media and he'll say, there's no one likes Mexicans more than me while he's eating a taco. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's yeah. just... Suck it. It's Alanis Morissette. You're on Summit Mornings with Mike and Sam. And uh, unfortunately uh, for me last night, I it was the unlucky recipient of a, a, a robbery, a household robbery. Oh, wow, we. Yeah, last night. Uh, didn't hear the robbers. They made their way stealthily. Just like the Pink Panther the, does. Yeah, like the Pink Panther does. He, he They came in through the front door, yeah. which was unlocked. Albeit, there's your first problem. There's your first problem. <laughs> Straight through, took the TV uh, along with a few gaming consoles. They always take the TV, don't they? Yeah, and it's a, it was a good TV. I tell you what, though, I mean, it's like I don't want to say robbery's a good thing, but they do a good job. <laughs> I mean, they did a good job. Yeah, uh, well, we didn't hear them, and they did it in the middle of the night. So it's a little bit scary, I suppose. But like, that's a great. Um, Attitude, instead of being gutted and complaining to us, you're praising them for their theft efforts and their sneakiness. Theft ain't easy. You feel pretty like stealing a candy bar from a dairy. Mm. Yourself is quite It's as easy as taking scary. a PS1 console from a flat from in the house. Yeah. yeah. So obviously you just got to lock up your house. It, it really happens to you if you make sure that your house is secure. Really. Lock your door. Yeah, you'll be locking it now, eh, right, Sam? I'll be making sure it's locked. I'll get the bloody barricade out. <laughs> Summit. It's Novocaine for the soul. Eels. 
do you uh, ever get really, really pissed off when someone... I uh, get really pissed off in general. Well, that's nice of you, yeah. Um, <laughs> things that piss you off? Do you just want to name one of the two of those things? Uh, people people that chew loudly at the dinner table. Yeah, that's, that's true. Open mouth chewing as well is bad news. People that cut me off in traffic. Uh, people well, the list that... goes on, doesn't <laughs> it, really? And, and everyone loves a little bit of airplane... Uh, Pissing off. So everyone gets a little bit um, perturbed by a few airplane things because it's a large congregation of people that have no idea who each other are, mm. and yet you're stuck in this long haul flight, long haul flight <laughs> yeah. for 17 hours to someone that you have no idea who they are, and you definitely don't want to make conversation with them. And there was an opinion piece um, on the newspaper about. People recline in their seats. People getting pissed off with people reclining in their seats, but there's nothing that you should be whinging about. Well, if they're gonna Fair make enough. if they're gonna make the seats to recline, you should be able to use that and use your recliner because otherwise they shouldn't have them there, or they should change the recliner to not tap the person on behind you and not touch them. Well, if you're reclining and the person reclines in front of you, you've got nothing to complain about. If the person in front of you is reclining, well, then you might as well recline too. And then, yeah, because I th- I thought <laughs> yeah. about this actually. You'd need every single person in the plane to recline their seat at yeah. the same time in unison, like synchronized swimming, to make it a successful operation. So you don't when you enter the plane, what you mm. should do. This guy can shut up, because what you should do is all recline, send a group message out. Hey, three hours in, we're going to recline, guys, because we're knackered, a big flight, and then they're all honky dory. Yeah, but then you get the food coming out. You're sitting there with your food on your plane. Yeah. And you haven't finished yet, but the person in front of you has finished. Yeah. Straight away, recline the seat. <laughs> food comes bang right next to you, <laughs> and you you're that's, done for. That's that's that's, to you. Well, it has happened to me. And I'm not happy with it. Yeah. Well, and I guess and we we can't not talk about the crying babies as well. That's the other one. It's, yeah. it's, it's lack of space and it's infants crying. Surely you can wait a couple of years before you bring your babies on a on a flight. They're not going I got bought a lot around overseas when I was very young and I don't remember any of the trip. Yes, and I'm, I I just got that's just a cheap airfare and they go, "Oh, we took you overseas. What have you done for me lately?" <laughs> I was young, I can't bloody remember it. Summit 961. There's some lovely little stories going on around the world and one uh, if you're losing hope in police officers, if you're an American, you're losing hope in police officers. Well, this one guy in LA, he responded to a noise complaint about a band playing a little bit of Iron Maiden and also The Offspring. Well, in his garage was, or something? Yeah, he responded the way he should. What did he he say? went in there <laughs> and bashed them. <laughs> what? On the guitar. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He got a little bit. He got it done. <laughs> you led me somewhere and then took a took a U turn and it got me. But, yeah, yeah. No, get on you for doing that. That's quite cool. He joined in. Yep, good joined man. In. There's too many people out there that have their fingers up their backsides. They need to relax and let the music speak for itself. Take a chill pill. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy it, eh? Yeah, exactly. Just just get in there and play the music. From your heart and your soul. This podcast is brought to you by Summit 961 as part of the New Zealand Broadcasting School.